Welcome to Super Coin Crew, where it's non-stop Nintendo. We've got 107 facts about Splatoon that you should know. So whether you're a kid or a squid, grab your gear and let's squid jump into the facts. Number 1. Splatoon was released on May 29, 2015 for the Wii U and is Nintendo's first online third-person shooter. Number 2. Splatoon was developed by Nintendo Entertainment Analysis and Development Group No. 2, Nintendo EAD for short, which also developed Nintendo Land, games in the Wii series, and Animal Crossing series. Number 3. Hisashi Nogami, producer for the recently released Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer, was also the producer for Splatoon. Number 4. In an interview segment with Nintendo's late Satoru Iwata called Iwata Ass, Nintendo EAD said that Splatoon features the Inkling, the first new character since the release of Pikmin. Number 5. According to Nintendo EAD, Miyamoto and Nintendo EAD make ideas for their games based off of the function rather than the designs. The basis for Splatoon was originally from a demo by program director Shintaro Sato, featuring black and white quote tofu-like blocks shooting ink in a maze. Number 6. Before Splatoon's iconic Squid Kids, the Inklings, the team struggled to find their character. They switched from their prototype tofu blocks to rabbit shooting ink guns. However, they couldn't explain why rabbits were shooting ink in the first place. After realizing that squids squirt ink and match the motif, they decided on rolling with the squids as their characters, but it did take a while before the Inkling designs were finalized. Number 7. In an interview with Famitsu, producer Hisashi Nogami and art director Seita Inoue spoke about their design process for the Inklings. Their disproportionately large heads on Inklings aren't just to make them look cute, it's also there because it makes them easier to see when they're inked. Their body proportions were also designed to make them look sporty. Number 8. Fun fact, Miyamoto told the production team that if they were still struggling to think of a character, they could use Mario to believe Splatoon was almost a Mario spin-off. Number 9. Seita Inoue, the artist responsible for the plaza you see when you boot up your Wii U, is also responsible for all the wonderful art splattered across Splatoon. Number 10. In an interview with Famitsu, Inoue and Nishimori stated that during development, they centered their designs around the Inkling girl. The design of the Inkling boy was actually created in comparison to the girl. Number 11. In a recent poll, 75% of the players in Japan play as the Inkling girl. If I lived in Japan, I would count as part Part of that 75, just saying. Number 12, sound composer Yuki Suji confirmed that some sound effects were created from scratch. Suji bought several highly goopy materials to create the sound of the ink we know. Number 13, Splatoon has a dark secret hiding within its colorful inky goodness. According to the sunken scrolls found by playing the single player's story, the world of Splatoon is set after the extinction of most creatures of the surface due to rising sea levels. Number 14, speaking of extinction and sunken scrolls, humans are seemingly extinct to the world of Splatoon. Sunken scroll number 26 features the fossil of a human in the middle of some kind of ritual gaming. Also found in the sunken scroll is a game disc. Wii U box, Wii U gamepad, and strange combination of a Wii U Pro Controller and Wii Remote Plus. Number 15. Surprise! On the official Splatoon Tumblr page, Nintendo released a crafty trick to give the second player motion controls for Battle Dojo mode. Since the Wii U Pro Controller didn't have motion controls, the Wii Remote Plus would provide the motion for it. Number 16. Splatoon was first revealed at E3 2014 featuring only one stage and barely any weapons. The development team stated that the game was only 10% complete at the time. We've gone a long way, haven't we? Number 17. If you look into the window outside of the Battle Dojo, you will spot three controllers. A white Wii U gamepad, a gray Pro Controller, and a black Pro Controller. Number 18. After the Splatoon reveal at E3 2014, Ho'unori, author of Spoof on Titan, a super deformed Attack on Titan spin-off series, contributed artwork as support for the series. Number 19. Splatoon also caught the eye of Masahiro Anbe, author of the squid-centric series Ikamusume, or Squid Girl. After the reveal, a rough translation of what Anbe had stated says, I could not help but draw somehow. It doesn't end there. Up until the release of Splatoon, Masahiro Anbe continued to create tribute illustrations featuring the Inkling Girl, such as the Inkling Girl in a schoolgirl outfit, a pink Inkling Girl, Inkling Girl vs. Squid Girl, and more. After drawing so many Splatoon tributes, Nintendo decided on an official Splatoon crossover with Ika Musume, complete with artwork by Shiho Fuji. The Squid Girl outfit was released worldwide as part of a massive update in August 2015. Anbei even drew an Inkling Girl wearing the Squid Girl outfit. So flippin' cool. 
Number 20. In the game, there is gear that references other games such as the Super Mario series, like the black pipe tea sold in Jelly Fresh. It features elements from the Mario series such as pipes and blocks. Oh, did we mention that it also exists in real life? Yep, you can actually buy it. Number 21. Nintendo's popular amiibo line of functional toys hit Splatoon. Amiibo versions of the Inkling Girl, Inkling Boy, and Inkling Squid were released with the launch of Splatoon. These amiibo unlock various challenges and exclusive in-game gear. Nintendo of America released these amiibo as a three-pack. Elsewhere, such as in Europe and Japan, these amiibo are sold in separate packaging. Number 22. The Splatoon amiibo can even be used in Super Mario Maker. This makes Mario look like an Inkling Girl, an Inkling Boy, or an Inkling Squid. In water levels, the Inkling will even turn into a squid. Number 23. When Splatoon first launched, it featured a total of 5 maps, 1 game mode, and a handful of different weapons, and a variety of gear. With the release of several updates and downloadable content, Splatoon now sports a total of 14 maps, 3 ranked game modes, 1 regular mode, squad battles, private battles, two completely new weapon types, and a ton of gear. And all this additional content was added for free. Number 24. There is also the well-dressed cat, Judd, or at least he looks well-dressed. When Judd is not sleeping, he determines the winner of the match. Number 25. Judd's name actually is a derivative of the word judge, which is what Judd does after a match. Judd's Japanese name is also Jaji Kun, which when pronounced sounds like judge. Number 26. In 2014, Splatoon won a Game Critics Award for Best Original Game. Number 27. There is a mod created by Seth Bling with the help of Pyro Puncher that allows you to play a Splatoon-like game mode in Minecraft. It comes complete with different weapons representing the different types of weapons available in Splatoon. Number 28. The influence of Splatoon also reached Team Fortress 2. YouTuber Dr. Lil Robot, along with the small dev team, created Splat Fortress, a mod that allowed players to play a Splatoon-based game in Team Fortress 2. Number 29. In Splatoon, special festivals called Splatfests take place in Ingopolis. These events pit two opposing teams against each other. The first Splatfest launched on June 13th in Japan and July 4th in North America and in Europe and Oceania. Number 30. During Splatfest, the daytime Inkopolis Plaza turns into a nighttime concert complete with dancing. Number 31. Regions of the world actually get different themes for Splatfest, with North America getting cats versus dogs, Europe and Oceania getting rock versus pop, and Japan getting rice versus bread as all of their first themed battles. Number 32. On August 29th, the Splatfest theme gave North American players a chance to choose the Transformer team of their choice, Autobots or Decepticons. Each team's Inklings wore the shirts that respectively showcased the symbol of their team name. This is the first North American Splatfest to use trademarked properties. Number 33. During Splatfest, Judd can be seen dancing on his box instead of taking a cat nap. His pillow also seems to be absent. Number 34. When you don't approach him, Captain Cuttlefish bobs his head to the Splatfest music. Number 35. Did you know that in Canada, there was frozen yogurt inspired by Splatoon? For only a limited time, Yogurties and Yogan Fruits stores offered the Splatoon-inspired Squidsicle, which is mango sorbet and inkberry, a strawberry frozen yogurt. Number 36. The Splatoon soundtrack was released on October 21st, 2015. It is appropriately named Splatoon. I see what they did there. Number 37. Splatoon's soundtrack consists of music by several fictional music groups from the Splatoon world, such as the Squid Sisters and Squid Squad. Number 38. Two more bands, Chirpy Chirps, known as ABXY in Japan, and High Tide Era, were added in the Splatoon August update. Number 39. The Chirpy Chirps album cover features all four band members. Upon closer inspection, the band member on the far right has a shirt that vaguely resembles Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. Number 40. Also, the Chirpy Chirps band member on the far left wears a shirt that features what looks like the Wii U Gamepad ZR button, but in the language seen in Splatoon. Number 41. Despite their group name, the Squid Sisters, Callie and Marie are actually not sisters. According to Sunken Scroll number 17, Callie and Marie are actually cousins. Number 42. Callie and Marie. Callie Mary. Calamari. Callie Marie is a play on words on a fried squid dish. Number 43. Callie Marie can be seen in the studio in the second floor of Inkopolis Plaza. If the player looks at them for a certain period of time, both of them will wave back at the player. Number 44. If you stand by the train in Inkopolis Plaza, a jingle version of Fuel the Melody by the Squid Sisters can be heard coming from the train. Number 45. When creating a private room, a password screen appears. 
Like a keypad, each number button is linked to a music note. You can actually play the tune to feel the melody if you punch the keys in the correct order. Number 46. During Splatfests, Callie and Marie can be seen performing in Inkopolis Plaza instead of sitting down in their studio. Number 47. Callie and Marie's clothes change color to match the color of the Splatfest teams they represent, much like your own inkling. Number 48. Speaking of colors, if you go to Callie and Marie after a match, the color schemes of their chairs match the colors of the two teams in your last match. The main color represents the bad guys, while the arrows represent the good guys. Number 49. Before becoming Squid Idols, the dev teams decided that Callie and Marie were originally going to be Shrine Maidens, with the ability to transmit messages from gods to people. Number 50. Sunken Scroll number 23 presents the sheet music to the customary chorus of Calamari County. When played, it sounds extremely similar to Feel the Melody by the Squid Sisters. Hmm, I wonder why. Number 51. The Squid Squad consists of members Sin, Voengut, Bay, and Dr. These names are abbreviations for synthesizer, vocals, and guitar, bass, and drums respectively, and represent their roles in the band. And that's probably why they're so hard to pronounce. Number 52. Inkopolis features a small variety of shops. One shop, Shrimp Kicks, is owned by Krusty Shan, a Japanese tiger prawn. Krusty Shan's name is a play on the word crustacean, which is the group of sea animals that shrimp belong in. Just want to take a quick break from the facts to tell you what Super Coin Crew is all about. It's your channel for non-stop Nintendo. We got Splatoon, we got Super Mario Maker, and we have Let's Play, Nintendo products, and all things Nintendo. So join the coin by subscribing. Now let's get back to the facts. Number 53. Krusty Sean might look like fried prawn, but his fried exterior look is actually a designer jacket. That's a bit morbid. Also, look at his tiny feet. Number 54. Jellyfresh, owned by Jalonzo, is a wordplay for jellyfish. Quite fitting since the owner is a jellyfish. Number 55. Cooler Heads, a headgear shop, is owned by Annie and Mo. Annie is a sea anemone, and Mo is a clownfish. Also, Annie and Mo said together is a wordplay for anemone. Number 56. Mo sits in Annie's hair, which represents the symbiotic relationship of clownfish and anemones. Number 57. There's the amiibo box in Inkopolis Plaza, and players can only see the front. But did you know it's like a real amiibo box? There's even text detailing the amiibo functions written in the language of the Inklings right on the back. Number 58. Sheldon, owner of Ammonites, is a horseshoe crab. His name derives from shell which represents the large shells horseshoe crabs have. His shell sits on top of his head. Number 59. Ammonites also sounds like ammonites, which were prehistoric squid-like creatures. Thank you, Animal Crossing, and your wonderful, wonderful museum. Without you, I would never have known that. Number 60. Sheldon's grandpappy is Amos's Schellendorf. He is responsible for all those weapon blueprints you collect, such as the Hero Shot, Roller, and Charger replicas, the Aerospray MG and RG, the Dynamo and Gold Dynamo Roller, and more! Number 61. To add on to the wonderful list of wordplay, Booyah Base, the name of the little strip mall in Inkopolis Plaza, is wordplay for Booyah Base, which is a fish stew originating from France. Number 62. As we said before, during development, there was a possibility for Splatoon to become a Mario spin-off. That, of course, didn't happen. However, in Urchin Underpass, a little 8-bit blooper sticker can be found on one side of the map. A blooper sticker can also be found in Flounder Heights. Blooper, of course, are from the Mario franchise. And there are even more stickers. Urchin Underpass also features a sticker from another popular series, The Legend of Zelda. An 8-bit Octorok sticker can be found on the opposing side of the map. An Octorok sticker can also be found in Bluefin Depot. And in Flounder Heights, a Goonian sticker can be found. Another Mario reference, this time from Super Mario Land. Number 63. To celebrate the launch of Splatoon, Nintendo hosted an event called the Splatoon Mess Fest, featuring many Splatoon-based games, and was host to many celebrities including James Marsden with his daughter, Ali Simpson, Willow Shields, Ty Simpkins, and Nolan Gold. Number 64. Famitsu held a Splatoon Squid fashion contest for Japanese fans where the winner had the honor of having their costume added into the game. The winning design was a Sushi Chef costume. Number 65. Famitsu Contest also awards sub-winner. Three designs were chosen by the Splatoon dev team and the winners received a signed poster by the developers. Another set of three designs were chosen by Famitsu and the winner received a signed poster as well. 
Number 66. Before the launch of Splatoon, Nintendo launched a special event called the Global Test Fire. This allowed people to play and test out Splatoon before they bought it. Number 67. Spoiler alert! DJ Octavio, the final boss, was originally supposed to be a wasabi chef. This was eventually changed to the final boss we know today, the great octopus DJ himself. Number 68. Despite being an online multiplayer heavy game, Splatoon has no voice chat feature. Co-director Yusuke Amano says it's due to the negativity surrounding online voice chat that they decided not to add a voice chat feature. Number 69. Sunken Scroll number 8 references Paradise Lost by John Milton, shown in the painting of a pair of Octarians, similar to the illustration of Adam and Eve found in Paradise Lost. The title of the scroll is even Paradise Lost, but instead of John Milton, it's by Octolangelo. Number 70. Sunken Scroll number 10 shows the evolution of Inklings. This image is a reference to the many depictions of the evolution of man. Number 71. Every sunken scroll has a little character drawn on the bottom right corner. If you flip through the sunken scrolls, it acts like a little flipbook, and you can see the character transform from a zapfish to Judd and then to Sheldon. Number 72. A street urchin is a person who spends most of their time in the streets, mainly the slum areas of big cities. Spike is a sea urchin who can be found in an alley in Inkopolis Plaza. He is literally a sea urchin. Number 73. When you go to Spike, you can see sea snails to his left and sea snail shells to his right. The sea snails appear to be shaking on the left, so there's some speculation that Spike eats his sea snails. And that's of course supported by the fact that sea urchins are natural predators of sea snails. There's also the really ominous screwdriver right next to him, and screwdrivers are sometimes used to open up shells of some sea critters. Come on, Spike. Number 74. During Inkopolis News, when Walleye Warehouse pops into the rotation, Callie and Marie reveal that they used to work there. Marie even mentions how often Callie used to break the assembly line. Number 75. When talking about Walleye Warehouse, different versions of Splatoon seem to contradict Marie's dialogue. In the European version of the game, Marie says that she still has her uniform from working. In the North American version of the game, Marie says she's burned her uniform after quitting. Number 76. During news for Moray Towers, Callie declares rollers are super effective, while Marie responds with chargers are the very best, like no gun ever was. Both of these lines are references to Pokemon phrases. It's super effective and I want to be the very best, like no one ever was. That's awesome. Number 77. As if you haven't been spending most of your life in Splatoon already, Nintendo launched a web app called Splatnet. This allows players to keep track of which maps are in the next rotation, see what their friends are doing, check on their loadout and stats, and plan battle times, plus more! Number 78. If you look closely, you can find photos of Callie and Marie posted in the corner of Captain Cuttlefish's shack. Now why would Captain Cuttlefish have a picture of Callie and Marie? Hmm... Number 79. As of September 2015, there have been over 2.4 million copies sold worldwide. Number 80. Before and after a boss battle, if you listen closely, very strange noises can be heard coming from the stage. Number 81. When you go into Ammo Knights, you can access the Firing Range. The Firing Range features a basketball hoop. If you throw a sub-weapon through the hoop, your inkling actually says something. Try it out next time you're testing your gear. Number 82. In an article in Edge Magazine, it stated that inklings gain full control of their human and squid forms at the age of 14. This would make all the inklings in Splatoon at least 14 years old. Number 83. The Rainmaker weapon is based off of the Japanese creature of folklore, the Shachihoko. The Shachihoko is said to have the power to cause rain. Makes total sense. Number 84. Judd wasn't always judging turf wars. He was once owned by a human before the rising sea levels and the events in Splatoon. Number 85. We mentioned earlier that Judd is, quote, well-dressed, although the cat might look like he's wearing a snazzy outfit. That's just his naturally occurring fur pattern. Number 86. A picture of a relative of Sheldon can be seen hanging on the wall in the background of Ammo Knights, and he has a rather large mustache. This relative is seen nowhere else in the game. Number 87. Callie and Marie are stylish, we know. The hats they wear actually resemble certain ways squid is prepared for dishes. Callie's hat looks like a piece of ikiaki, a fried or grilled squid. Marie's hat looks like a calamari ring. Number 88. Ever wonder what happens if you do absolutely no inking on a map? Judd lies and makes one team win anyway. Number 89. The Splatoon we know today requires some skill with maneuvering through ink, be it on the floor or the walls. The developers question why walls should even be inked and even removed the feature for a period of time. The winner of the match was decided by which team covered the most area on the map. And since the map was seen with a top-down view, walls weren't seen at all. It wasn't until the Inklings came and their ability to dive into the ink 
that inking walls gave teams tactical advantages. Number 90. The street aesthetic of Splatoon was given life because one staff member really liked that style, according to Hisashi Nogami. Furthermore, during an interview with Edge, Nogami stated that they're often told that they're a young group. With the main design team being around their 30s, it means that they grew up in the 1990s when skate and street styles were in. Number 91. Hisashi Nogami likened Splatoon's concept to the joy of making a mess. Nogami said it was like vandalism. Number 92. The hype for Splatoon was at an all-time high in Europe, so high that a truck containing several copies of Splatoon was hijacked. Copies of the Standard Edition, Special Edition, and some Amiibo figurines, all of which were in that truck, were stolen. Number 93. Splatoon's shops carry various fictional brands. Those brands are not meaningless. Each clothing brand has a higher chance of getting a certain ability within the game. Number 94. Co-director Tsubasa Sakaguchi's favorite weapon is the Jet Sweeper, known as the Jet Squelcher in localized versions of the game. This shooter has long range and a good fire rate. Number 95. In Inkopolis Plaza, you can see two Inklings dancing by a window at any given time. This was based off of people in Japan who dance in front of shopping malls after closing hours. Part of the development team took motion capture of dance routines and added it into the game. Number 96. Co-director Sakaguchi's dancing skills were apparently not too great, so they took his routines out. Number 97. When the dev team first implemented gyro controls, they were afraid that players would find them difficult. However, they compared it to learning how to ride a bike. It would take a lot of practice, but once you learn, a whole new world opens up for you and it's just great. Number 98. Splatoon's Squid Kid TV commercial gave rise to the You're a Kid, You're a Squid meme. Callie and Marie sometimes reference this meme during their Inkopolis News announcements. Number 99. The Inklings, which we know as the main characters of Splatoon, is also the name of a group of writers that include J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis, among others. Also, a Wacom pen. Boy, this is getting confusing. Number 100. 8-bit squid-themed arcade games were included in Splatoon. These can be played by either going to the arcade machine in Inkopolis Plaza or selecting them on the gamepad while waiting for a match to start. By default, only one game is included, Squid Jump. Additional games such as Squid Racer, Squid Ball, and Squid Beats can be unlocked by beating certain amiibo challenges. Number 101. A lot of Splatoon's weapons are based off of real-life objects. Rollers and brushes being the most obvious examples, are based off of paint rolls and brushes. Certain shooters such as the Aerospray RG and Aerospray MG look a lot like airbrush guns. Sloshers, which were added in the August update, look like buckets of paint. Number 102. Splatoon Me costumes were released for Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS. Inkling costumes are available for Me Fighters in the paid DLC and give your Me Fighter a Splatoon look. Number 103. Music for Splatoon was composed by Toru Minagishi, known for his work in several Zelda games, and Shio Fuji, known for her work with games such as Animal Crossing City Folk and several games in the new Super Mario Bros. series. Number 104. Zapfish are used to power Inkopolis and beyond. The Japanese word for Zapfish roughly translates to catfish's battery. This is possibly a reference to how certain catfish are able to produce electrical charges. Number 105. Sunken Scroll number 16 reveals much more than meets the eye. We see an Octoling that looks a lot like DJ Octavio and an Inkling that resembles Captain Cuttlefish, albeit several years younger. DJ Octavio also seems to have the ability to assume a human form, similar to Captain Cuttlefish. Number 106. Camp Triggerfish is the stage released in July 2015. It was the first multiplayer stage to feature a changing element. When playing Turf War, with one minute left in the match, the floodgates, which are normally closed, open up, allowing access to the enemy base from a new angle. Number 107. Urchin Underpass is the only stage thus far to receive major renovations, expanding its playing field and adding more ways to enter the fray. Thank you so much for watching 107 Facts All About Splatoon and look forward to more facts about your favorite Nintendo property. Like Super Mario Maker and let us know in the comments what Nintendo games you'd like to see on the channel. Join the coin and subscribe now.